What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchPresentials.com. So Artisan 2 just added a feature that can make a huge difference in the way that we edit grades in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we've talked about Artisan in the past. It's basically a sculpting tool set for SketchUp that gives us the ability to do things like dynamically add detail, um, use like pinching and brushing and other things like that. Artisan 2 does also include subdivision tools as well that allow you to um, do things like splitting up your meshes, subdividing them to make them smoother, other things like that. It's a very powerful sculpting tool set. They've just released a new version that contains a tool specifically designed to help us work with grades in SketchUp. And I wanted to talk about how it works. So let's jump over into SketchUp and um, give this a look. So this is just a mesh that I actually created in Blender. Um, you can see how it's nothing special, right? It's just a bunch of triangulated meshes in here, or um, it's a triangulated surface. I'm actually gonna come in here with soften edges. I'm gonna soften all of this. Um, just like this. So it's a pretty dense mesh. If you look at it, right, if I triple click in here, you can see how there's a ton of geometric detail in here. But what we wanna do is we wanna use the grade brush in order to make some adjustments to this terrain. And so the grade brush can be found in the Artisan Sculpt tool set under grade brush right here. And so what you can do is you can with this uh, surface active, you can click the option right here for grade brush. And it is going to tell you that your mesh needs to be triangulated before sculpting. I'm not sure exactly how that works since the mesh already came in as triangles. Um, it doesn't seem to be changing or adjusting anything when I do this. So I think it's fine. I just think it's interesting that it's in here triangulating things when I feel like it's already kind of triangulated, but that's okay. Um, so what we wanna do in here is notice how there's a number of different brushes in here, right? You can select any of your different brushes in here um, in order to activate this, right? And it tells you that you need to triangulate every time you switch brushes in here. But in this case, we wanna focus on the grade brush. And the grade brush is very interesting because it has tools in here specifically designed to help you set a slope on a surface. So um, remember, this has all the standard tools you have in here, right? So for example, if I adjust the radius, I can set this to adjust my radius like this. Um, I can also adjust the strength of that brush, right? So inside is where this is gonna be like fully applied and then it's got like a fall off around the outside. And then the de detail size is going to set the size of the uh, resulting geometry that's created in here. But um, let's go ahead and let's come in here and let's say that we wanted to create a 10% slope, right? Notice how in the lower right hand corner, you've got an option to type in a percentage um, just like this. So what I want to do is say I wanted this to be a 10% slope. I'm just going to type in value of 10, hit the enter key. Well, notice what this does is this set th sets this as a 10 to one. So what that's going to do, and you can kind of see this in here is it's going to lock your brush to that grade. If I typed in 50, notice how it's going to do 50, just like this. Now, one thing that you can do, right, is you can do a control click in order to set the direction that this grade is going to go, right? So notice how before, when I did a control click, this was going to adjust my grade this way. Well, I don't necessarily want that. I want my grade to run down my hill like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit control, I'm gonna single click, or I'm gonna hold control, sorry. And then I'm gonna move my mouse in the direction I wanna go, like this. And then I'm gonna type in a value of 10%. Well, notice what that's doing is that it's basically going to come in here and that is going to grade this to 10%. And it might be a little easier to see if we turn on our hidden geometry like this. But notice what this is doing is this is coming in here and this is basically applying that 10% grade to this whole area that my brush has selected like this. Now, this is super cool and super valuable in my opinion um, because it allows you to really kind of like lock this in here and adjust that grade. So notice how I can basically set this where it's a 10% grade all the way down this mountain like this. Now, you can adjust things like the radius, right? So say that we wanted to add a 10% grade over here, but we wanted it to be smaller. I can bring that radius down 
like this. Notice what it's doing is it's actually coming in here and it's applying this to this surface right here. Now, if you wanted to add some additional geometric detail, you can bring that geometric size or that size down like this. And so when you bring the detail size down, I'm gonna make it like really small in here. Notice what it's doing is it's dividing the surface up like this in order to add that additional detail in here. So you can set if this is gonna be like large or small in here when you first do this. I'm gonna bring my radius up, I'm gonna bring my detail size up a little bit like this. But notice how it's really easy to come in here and add this slope or this grade using this tool right here. And so one thing that's cool about this is you can pick an elevation to set as kind of like your starting point. And so one of the cool things about this, right, is if I come in here and I want to adjust an elevation based on a point, right, what I can do is I can tap the control key in order to lock a point, right? So it's whatever my mouse is over when I tap the control key. But say I wanted this to be my base elevation and I can go ahead and hold control and set my direction right here just by clicking. But notice how it's going to use this point right here as kind of the basis for the rest of my sloping. Well now, when I come in here, notice how it's moving things up and down in here like this. And it's using this point as kind of like my base point. And so let's say, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, but let's say now I wanted this to turn and head this other direction. What I can do is I can tap control right here. I'm also gonna hold control and click and drag this like this, but now, what I can do is I can set this to turn. And again, whoops, I lost my point right there. There we go. But what it's gonna do is it's going to set that slope relative to the point that I had kind of locked in here. So this gives you a fair amount of control over the way that you can grade things using elevations in here um, and the relative slopes around them. And so notice how we've got this icon that's over our cursor right here, that's the lock, right? And again, you can tap control in order to release that, but that's basically locking an elevation point in place, right? And so say that, for example, I wanted to come in here and I wanted to create a flat area. What I could do is I could enter a slope of zero like this, and then I can click and drag. Well, what it's gonna do is it's going to sculpt everything relative to that locked point, right? So what that means is that means that this is coming in here and this is kind of grading this up like this, but notice how it's all level to that locked point. If I was to type in a new value, right? So say 20%, and I'm gonna hold control and click and drag in order to set a new direction, right? Like this. But again, notice how that slope is going to be relative to that locked point in here. So um, that locked point is really powerful because it allows you to set something and then work from it inside of SketchUp when you're using the grade brush. And so you can also set that point, right? So I'm just gonna mouse over a point right here and tap the control key. But in this case, we wanna hold control and shift. Notice how when we hold control and shift up in the upper left-hand corner, it's kind of showing us this, but it's basically showing us that we are setting both the slope and the direction, right? So I can click and drag. Well, notice how when I let up on this, um, it's locked that slope in here, and now I can move my mouse in order to set the direction, right? So you can also kind of click and drag in order to do that. And again, notice how this is really powerful because it's sloping based on that control point right here. So um, if I do that again, I'm just gonna do a control shift and click and drag. That's gonna let me set the slope like this, then the direction by clicking, and then I can click and drag across here um, in order to sculpt out this terrain. All right, so you can also right click in here, go to display slopes. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna pop up an overlay right here, indicating um, slopes that are outside of a certain grade, right? So you can right click into your slope settings and you can adjust this, right? So say that you wanted to show, um, like for example, say that you were okay with grades that were um, less than 10%. What you could do is you could adjust this or say that you were okay with grades that were less than 20 percent you could click on okay well notice what that's going to do is that's basically going to color the grades that are over 20 percent as red right so you could come in here and you can adjust this in your slope settings right so maybe your upper limit is 40 percent i'm going to click on okay right here and it's going to adjust that 
right here. And we're gonna set our in range color to red or to blue, not to red. And so notice how as I change this, this is changing live like this as I come in here and I make adjustments. So you can use this in order to kind of overlay um, what color or how steep the grades are in here. Now, um, one thing is for me on that larger file, it didn't want to do that. I'm not sure why it just wasn't popping it up. Maybe there was just too much geometry in there. Um, it was a pretty large piece of geometry. It's working fine on this more simplified mesh right here. So I'm not necessarily sure what's driving that, but this is definitely a valuable tool for visualizing grades inside of your model if you're working with those grades. Okay, and then one last thing, you might have seen the modifier in here. Hold on, I'm gonna go to a top view real quick and we're just gonna cut out a piece of terrain in here. So we're just gonna go into this view right here. I don't know why my top view is taking me to my bottom view. It's probably the axes that are in here. But say that you had an object in here like a house, right? Like a footprint in here. So say that we were to, I'm gonna move this down a little bit and then I'm gonna push pull it up. Okay, and so in this situation, right, we've got a footprint that's in here. Well, let's say that we had kind of a steep grade, right? So I'm just gonna activate grade brush right here, and I'm just going to do a control shift and set this point. And notice how this is pretty steep, right? It's like 40% and it's facing, I want it to face this direction right here. So, so if I come in here and I click and drag, right? I'm gonna drag that detail size down a little bit and we're gonna drag on this. Well, notice how what it's doing, right, is it's kind of moving that boundary around a little bit, right? So notice how right here, right, what it's done is it's moved your mesh over. So if I like toggle into x-ray mode, you can kind of see it a little bit better. Um, so the edge of your house is here. This has actually moved this into the footprint. Well, um, I'm gonna do a control Z right here. And there's options in here either to lock your boundary, right? So if you lock your boundary, then what that should do theoretically is that should um, lock that boundary where it doesn't move around, right? Like the edges aren't moving when I do this. You see how it's locked right here um, so that you can't actually move the edges around, which that option is super valuable by itself. But then the other option is if you don't want to lock the boundary, you can hold the shift key. When you hold the shift key, what that's gonna do is this is gonna lock this into vertical displacement only mode. What that means is that means that your edges are only gonna move up and down um, inside of this, uh, inside of your scene right here. So even if I do like a negative 40% slope and I hold the shift key, notice what it's gonna do is it will slope this up along your building, but it's only going to do a vertical displacement in here. So what that means is that means that since it's a vertical displacement, it's only going to move those boundaries up and down, but they'll still align with your building itself, right? Like notice how even down here where things got kind of like nasty, um, so not necessarily ideal, it's still locked that boundary in place just when I held the shift key on my keyboard to do vertical displacement only. So if you do want to set up a footprint and then slope along that footprint without having things move around in here, you can do that by holding the shift key or by locking your boundary right here. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this grade brush inside of Artisan? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you want to learn more about some of Artisan's other features, I will link to a video on that on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.